So hey folks, so today I'm over here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas. They're actually a big dealer for fifth wheels as well as motorhomes and travel trailers. And today's video is going to be focused around that sixty-five dollars to $75,000 price range. What you can get for it and also what you might want to look for if you have a large family or if you're simply looking for more room or more mobility because that's really what it comes down to. When you look at a fifth wheel versus, say, a Class C or a Class A, fifth wheels are going to give you the most living room type format, the most residential type living accommodations for an RV. And when you want to compare the differences between a fifth wheel and, say, a Class A, generally it comes down to how the floor plan's laid out, the separation between rooms, as well as the flexibility when you're traveling, whether you do a lot of dry camping, whether you do a lot of boondocking in parking lots, or if you spend a lot of time at sites. A lot of folks that have been doing this for a long time will tell you that a fifth wheel is going to be a better option if you're going to be stationary for any amount of time, simply because it provides you with a much more residential style living accommodations. And we'll go through that. Whereas your Class A and your Class C motorhomes are going to be great for people who might not stay in places very long and move around a lot, simply because you don't have to transition from a truck or a tow vehicle to the RV itself. And that can really be convenient for a lot of folks who want a more convenient way of traveling without having to really set up camp everywhere you go. Now, in all fairness, this Sunseeker we're looking at right here is actually a used model. However, the price of these generally range anywhere from about sixty-five to about $80,000 new. They usually operate off of an E450 or an E550 chassis, and they usually have a V10 or V8 gas motor in them. They really don't offer diesel engines in these standard Class Cs any longer. You'd have to go to like a Super C, and at that point it really opens up a whole range of different types of power packages. Many times you can go to an International or you can go to an F550 or an F650 truck with a diesel engine. But your volume Class Cs are going to be gas engine vehicles, and they're going to look very similar to this. A van front end with a RV in the back. Now these prisms are an example of a Class C with a diesel engine. These are Mercedes power plant engines. They generally run between about eighty dollars and $120,000 depending on how you get them equipped. They're generally going to be smaller than their Class C standard gas counterparts, mainly because again you are getting a Mercedes platform, you're getting a Mercedes engine, and it's a little bit more of a sleek platform as well. Generally you're going to get full body paint on these also. Whereas these Freelander Class Cs are generally going to run in that $65,000 price range. They're going to be operated on either an E350, E450, or even a Chevrolet 4500 platform, as you can see here. And in the $65,000 range, what you have to keep in mind with these is that you are getting the truck. So if you want to compare a $65,000 Class C to a $65,000 fifth wheel, keep in mind that a fifth wheel still requires a tow vehicle, whereas a vehicle like this does not because it is the tow vehicle. The problem with that is, is once you're hooked up though, a Class C is going to be stationary at the campground. If you do a lot of traveling, if you're going to be staying in Walmart parking lots temporarily during trips, then a Class C might be a good choice simply because you get out of the cab and you go straight to the back from the inside and you're inside of your home already. Whereas on a fifth wheel, you'd have to dismount the tow vehicle and go to the back. Now, another nice thing about Class C's is they're generally designed so you can move around in them without having to take your slides out. And it makes it more convenient if you are going to be camping or boondocking in places where you can't extend your slides. Now, a Class C like this one right here, this Greyhawk, is generally going to run over $100,000, probably between $100,000 and $110,000. And this is going to be a really good option if you're going to have a larger family or if you want more space to move around in a Class C. Again, it's not going to give you the same interior volume as a fifth wheel, but it will give you a more convenient moving platform if you're going to be moving around and you don't want to have to worry about a tow vehicle as well as a trailer. Something to note with most Class C's is that they're built off of either a cabin chassis version of the vehicle that's in the front, or they're built off of a motorhome specific version from the manufacturer. So when you're looking at a fifth wheel, one of the really nice conveniences of a fifth wheel is you're going to have a tow vehicle. And the tow vehicle can essentially leave the fifth wheel hooked up at the RV ground and you can use your tow vehicle as your means of transportation. 
In the case of this big country, which runs about sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars, depending on how you get it equipped, you really get a lot for your money with something like this. And let me show you what I mean. On this particular unit, you get steel steps, but generally you'll have an upgrade option to get aluminum steps. But what's nice about these steel steps is that you get four of them. In many cases, you're only going to have three. The interior room that you're going to get in a fifth wheel is going to be far superior to that of almost any type of motorhome. There are some very high-end motorhomes, generally class A's on the market, that are going to give you what's called opposing slides. And opposing slides is just where you have a slide on each side that really spread out the entire width of the interior of the RV. As you can see, this one lists for 83 and they're selling it for 66. And in a fifth wheel, you really get a lot of room, a lot of amenities for the value. You really can't get any other type of RV configuration that's going to give you the interior space as well as the trim, the look, that residential type feel that you'd get in a fifth wheel. If you're considering getting it in a fifth wheel, you do have to keep in mind that you're going to be towing a very long truck and trailer combination down the road. Whereas this coachman that's right next to us might have a total length of around 30 feet. This particular unit is going to be closer to 42 to 43 feet just for the fifth wheel itself, and then the truck is going to add to that. So if you're not comfortable you know, hauling roughly 60-something feet of vehicle down the road, then you do probably want to look at either a Class A or a Class B or even a Class C, mainly because it's going to be a more compact package. What you do have to keep in mind, though, is if you do plan on staying at places for any length of time, a Class C is going to feel much smaller. It's going to be more difficult to really enjoy that area in a Class C than you would get with something like this. Now, this particular unit is called a mid-bunk layout. I made a video on that not too long ago where I defined why I really like the mid-bunk. And this one, this folds out into a queen-size bed, so you have a lot of room here if you have kids, if you have guests, or if you just need a room for perhaps an office. I am a huge fan of a mid-bunk. Um, our unit is a mid-bunk. And if we get another unit, we would probably upgrade to just a nicer mid-bunk unit. In this particular case, I really like the layout simply because this is going to give you a much larger bed than the fifth wheels that just have the two bunks up against the wall because you're at that point limited by the length on this one because it folds out into a full queen-size bed. It gives you a lot of leg room. Something that you're almost never going to see in a Class C is going to be a king-size bed. Again, in the price range that you can get one of these RVs for, you are going to get a lot of room that you just won't have as an option in many motorhomes, such as a king-size bed, a full-size shower, a huge vanity. I mean, this really is wide. If, to give you an idea, the space between the sink and the wall is massive compared to most. Porcelain toilet. This actually has two entrances into the bathroom. One right here through the sliding door and then the one that I'm in right now from the bedroom. Another nice amenity that you're going to see in your higher and fifth wheels is fully ducted AC units. In this case, you don't see the secondary unit here in the living room because it's on top and it uses a residential style thermostat right there. That's a huge perk simply because it's going to reduce a lot of the noise that is normally associated with the AC units in RVs. In motorhomes, unless you go to a high-end Class A, you're generally going to have exposed AC units in the ceiling. They may be ducted, but they're going to be very noisy. And that's a big perk of fifth wheels that have these ducted systems at the price point you get them for. Many of your mid-bunk units are going to have this loft up top as well. And this is a massive loft. This is probably a queen-size bed. The nice thing about having a loft like this in your fifth wheel is it gives you extra sleeping room. And of course, you're going to have this stair that gives you easy access into it. But if you have little kids, if you have you know other people that come over and you want to use the mid-bunk for them, having this overhead loft above the mid-bunk is really convenient. So I'm going to do a quick pan around here so you can kind of see the transition from the living room into the mid-bunk. So as you can see, it kind of has an L-shaped sofa center island, really nice faucet, stove, microwave, dining area right here, and then access into your mid bunk unit, which is right here. And it has double sliding doors, and there's your loft up top. Transitioning back takes you to your 
loft area. You have a little bit of a closet or pantry right here, as well as access to your bathroom. In that $65,000 price range, and even below that, you should get an auto leveling system. In this case, it's a level up by LCI, six point auto leveling system. Really comes in handy when you're at campgrounds and you don't want to take too much time trying to perfectly level the RV. Having a perfectly level RV also assists in cooling the refrigerator if it's a gas propane refrigerator. If you recall on my last video about fifth wheels, I mentioned a Z-style frame or a drop frame. And this is an example of it. Here's your standard frame rails as we move towards the front. And you can see right here where it drops down. And the frame essentially stacks up until you get to the front here. And the reason why it does that is it gives you much more storage right here. So when I open this up, you're going to see how much more storage there is by having the frame drop down here. Now it's hard to explain exactly how large this opening is, but what I can easily tell you is if I sat on the edge here, that the space between there and the top is almost above my head. And this is just massive. This is the type of storage that you get only in a fifth wheel or a very large class A, something that you're just not gonna get in a class C. At the price point that these run, if you have a truck that can haul one of these, a three-quarter ton, one ton, or dually, I would generally recommend a one ton dually to do any hauling of a trailer this large. But if you have the truck to haul this type of fifth wheel, this is the route to go simply because of the room and the value you get. You get just so much room in one of these that dwarfs a Class C. And we're going to walk into a Class C now just so you can kind of see a comparison.